If you value your freedom and your privacy, then you need to start worrying about the coordinated efforts that are being made to eliminate cash in our society. And not that you're worried about the future. And if you've been to certain European cities and other places where they're trying to push a society without cash, you know that. You've been into situations where shops didn't accept your cash money. They forced you to pay only with card. This is not just about the convenience uh, of using a clean, nice plastic card against the dirty cash. This is just another attempt from the government and financial institutions to exercise more control over our lives. Money arata. Cash is important. Cash offers a level of anonymity that digital transactions simply cannot offer. Paper money is an essential tool to preserve your privacy and autonomy from the efforts that banks, payment systems, and governments are making to control your financial transactions. So we have to fight for the preservation of cash. And in that way, we can protect our freedom, our privacy. In order to protect ourselves, we need to know who is behind all of this. We're going to find out that we need to know about the coordinated effort to eliminate cash, and also the importance of fighting for its preservation. We're also going to talk about the benefits of cash regarding freedom and privacy and the dangers that are yet to come. To understand the future, it is important to understand the motivations of the people who are in power. What is behind this trend towards a society without cash? At the end of the day, what they all want is power and control. This trend towards a society without cash is often represented to us as something unavoidable, a natural progression, but this couldn't be farther from the truth. In fact, it is the result of an intentional war against cash that is being carried out and designed by an alliance of three different elite groups who are acting in their own interest. The first of these groups is the banking industry. Now, important, this is not financial advice. Please read the full disclaimer before proceeding. Banks hate cash because its maintenance is expensive. Banks control the digital fiduciary money system that competes against cash, the paper money system. And banks don't like it when people exercise their right to exchange their digital numbers, their bank deposits, into real paper money. This forces banks to keep cash machines, ATMs. And a society without cash is a utopia, or maybe better, a dystopia, where money cannot exist outside of the banking system and can be only transferred from one person to another, from one bank to another. The reason why banks don't like that clients are allowed to withdraw cash is because it is expensive. It is a risky business for them because having ATMs and other money distribution systems, it's something that costs money. These costs include the salaries of employees, maintenance fees. You've seen those armored vehicles driven by armed guards that reload the ATMs with more cash. Well, that is an expense and banks would like to eliminate that to increase their profits. Withdrawal transactions are generating relatively low fees for the bank when you compare to other types of financial transactions. Banks earn a bigger profit when we make purchases with our credit cards or we make electronic payments. Besides that, when the clients are withdrawing cash, well, there is usually the need for security guards to guarantee the safety of both the bank employees and also the clients. This additional security is an expense that banks want to eliminate so they can profit even more. There is also the risk of burglary and uh, vandalism to the ATMs. This risk is also expensive to the banks. They need to fix and replace machinery, and all that means extra financial losses because of uh, types of different types of theft. The bank obviously has insurance to cover all that damage, but the insurance is not free. It costs money, and it reduces the profits of the bank. And finally, there is also the small risk of a bank run, a panic where a great number of clients simultaneously decide to take their money out. Because of the fractional reserve system, a situation like this could result in a bank not having enough cash to pay everyone and that could end in bankruptcy. All these factors contribute to the reason why banks don't like clients withdrawing money 
and they would rather see a society without cash. Visa and MasterCard are interested in eliminating the option of cash since they no longer benefit from these transactions. The second group that promotes a system without cash are the private payment companies, such as Visa and MasterCard, who benefit from the management of the infrastructure provided by the banking system. And these companies are interested in eliminating cash as an option, because cash transactions are made by peer by peer and they don't need them as the third party, the intermediary. This means that companies like MasterCard and Visa cannot benefit from cash transactions. One of the main ways that private companies are doing operating our payment systems, such as Visa and MasterCard, how they profit from a society without cash is through the data, the information they collect from our transactions. This information is extremely valuable for many reasons. On the one hand, it allows them to offer a market intelligence service to retailers helping them to understand the trends, the spending patterns of their clients. This can be incredibly useful to retailers and uh, their marketing campaigns and strategic decision making. But the data that they collect goes beyond helping retailers understand their clients. It also allows them to build detailed profiles of people like you. An individual consumer profile could include where you live, your shopping habits, the time of the day when you spend your money, and even your social connections. In this way, besides the direct profit that private payment companies generate thanks to the data that is collected from the cashless transactions, there is also the possibility of selling that data, your data, to third parties. This might include other companies that want information about their clients' behavior, as well as government agencies that are interested in tracking the activity of their citizens. Companies might defend themselves claiming that the data that they collect is always anonymized and is just used with uh, statistical purposes. But you should always remember that information that is collected can always get leaked. And once the information is leaked, it is impossible to undo it. It is easy to collect your entire shopping history and compare it to other people's histories to find out who you go out with to have a good time, who you travel with, who's your favorite child, the one that you give the best gifts to, what is your political point of view, what illness you have, what illnesses you might have in the future. The risk of profiling goes beyond the violation of our privacy. It also makes many assumptions. Let's say, for example, that you don't smoke but you do buy a lot of electronic cigarettes because you want to use the pieces of each electronic uh, uh, cigarette for some research project. If this information somehow ends up in the database of a health insurance company, their software might automatically increase your potential risk for cancer and you're going to have to pay more money for your annual coverage and you're never going to know why. Governments and central banks are also interested in pushing towards a society without cash. A society without cash allows better surveillance and control of financial transactions. We already talked about how governments hate cash in the episode number 27 of the Money Arata series. In a world where everything is digital and recorded, it is easier for the government to control where the money is going to and who is going to be handling it. But there is even more. Cash, as it is nowadays, it is hard to be changed, remotely blocked, frozen. This can be an obstacle to central banks and governments that want to enforce certain monetary policies, such as negative interest rates. The negative interest policy essentially reduces the amount of money that you have in your bank and encourage, force you to spend it. If this were to happen, everyone would withdraw their money from the bank and save at home as cash because that way the negative interest rates could not be applied. In a cashless society, your digital money can vanish little by little. Technology allows this type of policy, and this is already happening in China, where the digital yuan has an expiration date. You'll get it. Central banks also want to implement the negative interest rates, which basically means you're going to have to pay for the bank to hold your money for you. But with cash, 
People just have the option to simply withdraw their money and keep it in physical form and paper. Instead of being subject to abusive interest rates, they can do that. And by eliminating cash, central banks can manipulate the economy and easily force people to spend their money. The fight for society without cash is not only happening in developed countries, but in poor countries as well, like India. In 2016, India made a sudden and surprising decision to remove specific high-value bills to fight corruption and discipline the hidden economy. However, this change disproportionately affects the poorest Indian people, many of which depend on cash, they don't have access to a bank account. The main criticism that can be made here is that the real goal was not fighting against corruption and the hidden economy, but it was to promote digital payments to help companies that offer them, such as Visa and MasterCard. If a cashless society actually gets implemented, we could still use Bitcoin as a tool for protection of our freedom. All these groups, banks, private payment companies, and the government, they're working together to fight a war against cash. So it is up to us to fight for its preservation. Paper money offers us a level of privacy and freedom that digital transactions simply cannot allow. There is a digital option for this, which is Bitcoin. It is a money that cannot be censored and does not require the authorization of any middleman and intermediary. And when you use Bitcoin through a second layer, such as the Lightning Network, you get even more privacy, as well as instantaneous and transactions and very low fees. And since Bitcoin is an open protocol, it is the only alternative that we have to preserve our freedom. Just like there is a war against cash, you can also expect many attacks against Bitcoin from the powerful institutions for the very same reasons. And this is why it is so important to educate yourself on this so you don't get influenced by the narratives of these institutions. Therefore, the next time that you hear someone say that a society without cash is something unavoidable, Remember, this is being pushed by the people who are benefiting from this enforcement. You have to ask yourself if you really want this happening. In today's world, it is important to remember that paper money is more than a mere physical way of doing transactions or doing exchange. It protects our freedom. It is a tool for privacy. It ensures that we're not easily classified, profiled, that our money cannot be frozen, cannot be taken from us. Unfortunately, there are many powerful entities fighting a war against cash. The banks, private payment companies, and even governments. This is why it is important to consider alternatives, such as Bitcoin, which is an open protocol that is not under the control of any single particular entity, and it can help us to protect our freedom, even in a society without cash. So now I want to invite you to learn more by visiting arata.se forward slash diamond hands.